नमस्कार स्टूडेंट्स होप यू आर हेल एंड हार्टी टेकिंग केयर ऑफ योर हेल्थ एंड योर स्टडीज माई नेम इज ज्योत्सना एंड आई एम फ्रॉम एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट चंडीगढ़ इफ आई हैव टू आस्क यू वट इज दैट वन थिंग वी वर डिवॉइडेड ऑफ वेन वी वर अंडर द रूल ऑफ द ब्रिटिशर्स द थिंग विच गिवस स्पाइन टू एवरी सिटीजन येस नो पॉइंट्स फॉर गेसिंग दैट सिंपल थिंग इज द फंडामेंटल राइट येस दैट्स वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डू टूडे द कंसेप्ट ऑफ राइट्स हाउ डिफरेंट केसेस इन द वर्ल्ड सिनारियो हैड रीजन ड्यू टू कॉन्फ्लिक्ट विद द फंडामेंटल राइट्स हाउ फंडामेंटल राइट्स आर इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर एवरी सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया we shall be discussing in today's chapter chapter number 5 name of the chapter is democratic rights from the book democratic politics of grade 9 so let's get going elections and institutions need to be combined with the third element the enjoyment of rights to make a government democratic elected rulers working through the established institutional process must learn not to cross citizens democratic rights so what are these democratic rights 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 reasonable claims of persons which are recognized by society and sanctioned by law this means that an unreasonable claim of a person cannot become a right moreover definition and scope of rights change from one society to another and from a period to different period why do we need rights in a democracy rights are necessary for the very existence of democracy every citizen has the right to participate in democratic process additionally every citizen has the right to become the part of the democratic government part of the democratic government our rights help to protect the rights of the minorities against the majority things can go wrong when some citizens try to take away the rights of others so have you imagined a life without rights so let's take three examples which will help us understand what it means to live in the absence of rights first and foremost is a prison in guantanamo bay the american government secretly picked up about 600 people from all over the world and put them in the prison in Guantanamo Bay the government said that they were enemies of the US and linked to the attack on New York on 11th September 2001 known to the world as the great tragedy of 9/11 moving on citizens rights in Saudi Arabia in Saudi Arabia the position of the citizens with regard to their government has following features The country is ruled by a hereditary king and the people have no role in electing or changing their rulers. The king selects the legislature as well as the executive. Citizens cannot form political parties or any political organizations. There is no freedom of religion. Women are subjected to many public restrictions. So can we say that in Saudi Arabia people have basic rights question is open for a debate the third such option is ethnic massacre in kosovo yugoslavia was a small province before it split the population was overwhelmingly ethnic albanian but serbs were in majority in the country a narrow minded serb nationalist milosevic had won the election and his government was very hostile to the albanians he wanted the serbs to dominate the country many serb leaders thought that ethnic minorities like albanians should either leave the country or accept the dominance of the serbs does it remind us of such an instance prior to the world war 2 does it remind us of hitler again question is open for debate So let's have a quick review of what we have just done. So, an international human rights organization who collected information on the condition of prisoners in Guantanamo Bay was 
Amnesty International. Very good. A person who is arrested and detained shall be produced before the nearest magistrate within a period of 24 hours of the arrest. So, how was the massacre of Albanians finally stopped? As we just discussed, several countries intervened to stop this massacre. Moving on, rights in a democracy. All of us want to live happily without fear and without being subjected to bad treatment. For this, we expect others to behave in such a way that does not harm us or hurt us. Equally, our actions should not also harm or hurt others. A right is possible when you make a claim that is equally possible for others. A right comes with an obligation to respect others' rights. What is recognized by society as rightful becomes the basis of rights. That is why the notion of rights change from time to time and society to society. Any claim can be called as a right if it has following three qualities. The claim should be reasonable. The claim should be recognized by the society. The claim should be sanctioned by law. So let's take up rights in Indian constitution. Fundamental rights. Certain rights are fundamental to our life and hence they are given special status in the constitution. Such rights are called fundamental rights. Following are the fundamental rights as guaranteed by the constitution of India. First and foremost, right to equality. The government shall not deny the right to equality before the law to any person in India. Every Indian citizen right from a poor landless laborer to the prime minister is equal in the eyes of law of the land. The law of the land does not discriminate between two persons on the basis of socio-economic status or power. Every citizen has equal access to public places and public facilities like temples, bathing huts, road, public toilets, community wells, etc. Every person gets the equal opportunity to compete for public jobs like civil services, defense services, etc. However, some provisions have been made to give special preference to people from SCs and STs, women and OBCs. Similarly, physically disabled are also given reservation in government jobs. All these things are done to uplift these social groups' untouchability. Untouchability in any form has been banned and has been made a punishable offense in India. Moving on, the next right is right to freedom. The right to freedom means we can do whatever we want to do without interference from others, especially the government. The right to freedom includes the following rights. Freedom of speech and expression. Freedom of speech and expression is one of the essential features of democracy. Different people can have different views on an issue. Each person should have the freedom to express their views through various means. But the freedom of speech and expression comes with certain riders. You cannot express certain opinions which may incite public hatred and violence or which may hurt the sentiments of a particular religion or community. You cannot incite others to rebel against the country. You cannot defame someone on false basis. Moving on is the freedom of assembly in a peaceful manner. There are many issues on which a person or a group of persons need to hold public meetings. Anyone can hold such meetings, but one has to ensure that the meeting remains peaceful and does not turn violent. A meeting or a procession should not lead to destruction of public property. People attending the rally or a meeting should not be carrying weapons. Freedom to form associations and unions. Associations and unions are formed by workers and also by professionals. There are many trade unions in the country which promote the cause of the workers. Various professionals like doctors, businessmen, lawyers, etc make their own associations to promote their cause. Freedom to move to and reside in any part of the country. Every citizen has the right to travel to any part of the country. One can reside in any part of the country as well. This freedom allows everyone to migrate to another place in search of better opportunities. Many poor villagers have been able to improve their socio-economic status 
because they have the freedom to move out in search of employment moreover the freedom to move to any part of country can be curtailed in times of emergency like an attack or possibility of an attack by an enemy country freedom to carry out any profession or business one can choose any profession as per choice this freedom ensures that a person can fully realize his or her potential no person can be deprived of his personal liberty except under certain circumstances moreover the constitution also gives the right to life which means a person's life cannot be taken until and unless a court awards death sentence to them this also means that a person cannot be arrested by the police without proper legal sanction in case of an arrest the police have to follow these provisions the police will inform the person about the reason of confinement the detained person should be produced before a magistrate within 24 hours the detained person has the right to consult a lawyer and engage a lawyer moving on right against exploitation this right mainly focuses on three issues which are traffic in human beings this means the human beings cannot be traded to be used as slaves or to be used for immoral purposes the law has been specially made to protect human trafficking for sex trade bonded labor the constitution has banned the forced labor or bigar if a person is forced to work without pay or at nominal pay this is termed as bigar if the bigar continues for a long period then it is known as bonded labor child labor child labor has been banned in the country a child below 14 years of age cannot be employed in hazardous works like factories railway stations highway eateries due to constant effort by the government there are now very few instances of children working in hazardous occupations like bd making fire cracker factory bengal factory etc right to freedom of religion the constitution gives the right to freedom of religion as per this right a person is free to follow a religion of his or her choice the government does not interfere in the religious matters of its citizens every person has the right to profess practice and propagate their religion every religious group or sect is free to manage their religious affairs but a person cannot compel another person to agree to a particular religion by any means however a person is free to convert to any religion of his choice freedom of religion does not mean doing anything in the name of religion for example nobody can force a widow to tonsure her head in the name of religion nobody can perform animal sacrifice in the name of religion the government owned educational institutions do not promote any religion but it cannot prevent a private institution from doing so moving on cultural and educational rights every minority group has the right to protect its unique culture and to propagate its unique culture if a minority group wants to impart education in its own language it is free to do so in order to preserve the uniqueness of that language and the related culture the government runs institutions which cannot deny admission to anybody on the grounds of religion or language right to constitutional remedy when any of the fundamental right is violated the affected person has the right to seek constitutional remedies the person can go to the court where his grievances could be addressed no government organ like the executive legislature or any government functionary cannot violate the fundamental rights of the citizens in case of any violation of the fundamental rights a person can file public interest litigation known as pil pil is an instrument 
which allows anybody to knock at the door of the judiciary. So why do we need rights in democracy? In a democracy, every citizen has the right to vote and the right to be elected to the government. Rights perform a very special role in democracy. Rights protect minorities from the oppression of the majority. Rights are guarantees which can be used when things go wrong. So how can we secure these rights? Right to constitutional remedies makes the other five fundamental rights effective. When any of the rights are violated, we can seek remedy through courts. That is why Dr. Ambedkar called the right to constitutional remedies the heart and soul of our constitution. Fundamental rights are guaranteed against the action of the legislature, the executive, and any other authorities instituted by the government. There can be no law or action that violates the fundamental rights. If any act of legislature or executive takes away or limits any of the fundamental rights, it will be invalid. So how the scope of the rights can be expanded? Let's see. Fundamental rights are the source of all rights. Our constitution and law offers a wide range of rights. Over the years, the scope of rights has expanded. From time to time, the court gave judgments to expand the scope of rights. Like certain rights, like the right to freedom of press, right to information, and the right to education are derived from the fundamental rights. Now, school education has become a right for Indian citizens. The governments are responsible for providing free and compulsory education to all children up to the age of 14 years. Parliament has enacted a law giving the right to information to the citizens. The Supreme Court has expanded the meaning of the right to life to include the right to food. The Constitution gives many more rights, which may not be fundamental rights. For example, the right to property is not a fundamental right, but it is a constitutional right. Right to vote in elections is as important a constitutional right. So let's have a quick look at the legal rights and the fundamental rights. The legal rights are protected by an ordinary law, but they can be altered or taken away by the legislature by changing the law. Fundamental rights are protected and guaranteed by the constitution and they cannot be taken away by an ordinary law enacted by the legislature. If a legal right of a person is violated, he can move to any ordinary court. But if a fundamental right is violated, the constitution provides that the affected person may move to high court or supreme court directly here we should note that the right to property was a fundamental right before 1978 the constitution with its 44th amendment in 1978 took away the right to property as a fundamental right and was made a legal right under new article article 300 an ordinary right generally imposes a corresponding duty on another individual but a fundamental right is a right which an individual possess against the state. Fundamental rights are protected against invasion by the executive, legislature and judiciary. All fundamental rights are limitations on legislative power, laws and executive actions which abridge or are in conflict with such rights are void and ineffective. Our constitution guarantees the rights to move to the Supreme Court for the enforcement of fundamental rights. Thus, the remedy itself is a fundamental right. This distinguishes it from other rights. The Supreme Court is the guardian of fundamental rights. Further, all constitutional rights, not fundamental rights, for example, right not to be subjected to taxation without authority of law under Article 265, right to property, Article 300A, and freedom of trade, Article 301. A fundamental right cannot be waived. An ordinary legal right can be waived by an individual or a legislature. With this, we come to the end of this chapter. Let's quickly have a look at the focal points we have covered today. We started with the democratic rights. Then we discussed about three major countries who had some issues regarding fundamental rights. We shifted our focus to India and then we discussed the fundamental rights constituted 
in the Constitution of India. Majorly, right to equality, right to freedom, right against exploitation, cultural and educational rights, right to freedom of religion, and right to constitutional remedies. Further, we discussed the difference between legal rights and the fundamental rights. How right to property was later converted into a legal right by the 44th Amendment of the Constitution in 1978. Hope today's session was fruitful for you. Let's try to analyze what we have learnt out of it. So on your screens you have a question along with that you have four options. Let's pick the correct option. Let's get going. About 600 people from all over the world were put in a prison in Guantanamo Bay by the US forces, Japanese forces, German forces or British forces. Very good. These are US forces and not to forget that it was all done because they had doubt that these people had their connection regarding 9-11. Moving on, how many fundamental rights do we have? 6, 7, 8 or 9? Yes, the Constitution of India gives us 6 fundamental rights. Correct. Alright, next question. Children below the age of dash cannot be employed in any factory or mine or in any other hazardous work. 12, 13, 14 or 15. Correct. It is option C, 14. So, which of the fundamental right is called the heart and soul of the Indian constitution? Right to equality, right to freedom of religion, right to constitutional remedies or cultural and educational rights. Yes, Dr. Ambedkar called right to constitutional remedies as the heart and soul of the Indian constitution. All right. A person who is arrested and detained shall be produced before the nearest magistrate within a period of how many hours of the arrest? 20, 22, 23 or 24? Correct option. This is option D, 24. All right. The country which denies freedom of religion is Israel, Saudi Arabia, Iran or Yugoslavia. Yes, it is Saudi Arabia, option B. All right, so my last question is, the right to seek the enforcement of all fundamental rights is called right against exploitation, right to freedom, right to constitutional remedies or cultural and educational rights. This is option C, right to constitutional remedies. With this, we come to the end of this video. Before signing off, I would just say, rights. Rights were the ones due to which we had many arguments with the Britishers and many fights. Rights are the one which helps us to fly, to fly high like kites. Rights. Rights are the ones which help us to scale greatest heights. For every citizen, rights are important. My duty is protecting someone else right as well. So with this, we sign off for today. We'll be back with many more videos. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep studying. Namaskar.